most modern laptops do not have good battery life if you use them for high performing tasks like coding. If battery life is important to you, you should buy a MacBook. They are still by far the best in this department. Yeah, but I'm gonna speak on this. Get a MacBook Air, do not get a MacBook Pro. I have spent my entire career in the software industry, well over a decade as a professional developer, two degrees in computer science, many years in tech product management, even an MBA from MIT. Heck, we have three other team members here with a software development background. So today, we are returning to our roots to bring you this guide of the best laptops for programming. I'm so if you guys don't know, my name is Jovan E.N. I am an optoelectronics engineer with a master's degree in electronics engineering, a bachelor's in optics engineering. And laptops for engineering is one of the biggest investments you can make. It is extremely important what laptop you choose because you will have to run different software such as spicing models or coding models or what else is there? <laughs> Spicing and coding, circuit building and coding, or geometric building models. You're going to have to build something on your computer. You're going to have to code something if you're engineering. And I've had situations where I was an undergrad and my laptop completely broke down trying to buy a software. So I'm going to give my insight on what he's saying because I know he has experience, but this is the new world. I'm just going to give my insight on it and let's continue. I'm going to first walk you through what to look for when shopping for the ideal software development laptop. Then at the end, I'm going to present you with the laptops that you can buy right now that best embody this. And since new laptops are constantly being released, make sure to check out our website, specifically the well after this video is published. Now, stating the obvious, there are many different types of coders working in very different ways. For example, some coders just use their laptop to remote into a more powerful desktop or server. Their laptop needs are more basic. This video focuses on the most flexible laptop for coding, giving you the option to run your full development and testing environments locally. And if you can't afford a laptop that meets our criteria, do not let that prevent you from having a wonderful career as a software developer. And what's crazy is, if MacBooks or if Apple wasn't so stubborn, they would probably have the best MacBooks. But unfortunately, the Mac OS, I mean, yeah, the Mac, the Mac software just doesn't work on anything. So you might need something that's not Mac. I'm sure he's going to say something that's not MacBook, which sucks because MacBooks are so sturdy. You can code on almost any computer. I learned on an Apple IIe. You're just going to have to make some sacrifices to bring down the laptop's price. And big thanks to today's video sponsor, Ugreen. I've been using these in the 27 minute to a Nexode Pro, links below. The first choice when it comes to picking a laptop for software development is what screen size to buy. Seeing a large amount of code on screen is going to make you more effective as a developer. For example, you can see the bigger picture of the algorithm you are working on, or more easily discover the root cause of an issue when browsing through a large log file. If you have to constantly scroll to see what's going on or drill into certain pieces of code, you'll be less efficient, and you'll often forget the details of what you were previously looking at. This means you'll want a laptop with a screen large enough to get real work done. But most software developers that I know love the freedom to work in coffee stores or at different locations in a co-working space. Even corporate software developers often carry their laptops to meetings, so portability matters. Therefore, I recommend a somewhat light and compact laptop with a 16-inch display, ideally no heavier than five pounds. If you value portability even more, that's at the expense of productivity, go for a laptop with a smaller display of four. No, definitely get the bigger display. I get it, I get what he's saying, but no, you need the bigger display if you're coding. Actually, depending on, yeah, depending on how much you're willing to spend on this, you can get a lap, you can get a laptop with a 16 inch display. You can also get dual monitors that you can just get an adapter and plug your laptop into. That way you can see your codes on one screen and probably Google um, on another screen or the, ins the assignment on another screen, all coming from one same laptop. But definitely, this is one area that you probably shouldn't hold back in. Get the 16-inch display. 14 or 14.5 inches, that is under 3.5 pounds. That screen is still large enough to see a decent amount of code. But it is not just the size of the screen that determines how much code you can see on it. It's also the screen's brightness and resolution. The higher the resolution, the crisper the code looks and the more visible it will be at smaller font sizes. High brightness also helps with this, particularly in brightly lit environments. For example, if your screen is glossy and the display's brightness is not high enough, it will not be able to overpower reflections, and that will be distracting. 
Therefore, I recommend a screen with 210 pixels per inch or higher and a display brightness of 500 nits if the screen is glossy. If it's a matte, non-glossy panel, you can drop that brightness requirement down to around 400 nits. Honestly, who's going to sit here and count nits on a screen and count the amount of pixels? Nobody in college is doing that. I'm just going to tell you straight up. MacBooks have very glossy screens and it makes it hard to see if you're in daylight. Unless you're coding, well, a lot of people realistically don't code everywhere. Um, well, that's not true if you're in college. You probably are coding in libraries. So just letting you know, MacBook screens are extremely glossy and they're extremely expensive. One place that does have good laptops that aren't super glossy is Microsoft. You could probably get something from there. Maybe a Chromebook, but nobody wants a Chromebook. <laughs> Let's continue. When it comes to the laptop's processor, most modern ones are powerful enough for coding. But there are some gotchas to be aware of. Firstly, the type of laptop that you can buy may be dictated by your employer or school. They could require certain applications or environments that only run on specific hardware. So make sure to check with them before buying. But if you do have a choice, here is a general rule of thumb. For front-end web development, you can code on any laptop, Intel, AMD, Qualcomm or Apple. Those coding for native iOS applications, you will have to buy a Mac as you'll need to be able to compile Apple-specific code. For those coding native applications for the new breed of Qualcomm laptops, you'll want a Qualcomm laptop. On the flip side, those coding native Android applications, you'll want to avoid a Qualcomm laptop as it just doesn't run all that well on that hardware. For those doing AI ML development, playing video games or even creating games, you'll want a laptop with an Intel or AMD processor and dedicated NVIDIA graphics. That being said, on AI and ML specifically, you'll need an NVIDIA GPU if you plan to train your models locally. Okay. No college student, realistically, college students aren't doing all this on their laptops. Most of you are just here because you're engineering majors or computer science majors. The same thing, computer engineering, computer science, it's the same thing. Kind of. Anyways, here's what you need. You need a laptop that's not a MacBook because I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of the software that you're going to have to use, some of it just will not be available on Mac software. I'm going to be completely honest. And I had a MacBook all throughout undergrad. It was very hard. I had to borrow a computer sometimes from the library. Just save yourself the trouble. Don't get a MacBook. Don't get it. And if you and if you just have a MacBook, you just happen to have a MacBook, you can still code. If you're a computer scientist or a computer engineer, you can still code on MacBooks as well. It's honestly not too serious. But if you're in engineering, there are just some softwares that just will not work on your computer, point blank period. Also though, if you have Windows, you're not safe. There's something called ARM64, which are all on those touchscreen Microsoft and Windows computer where you could touch the laptop screen. If you have something like that, it also may not work because of ARM64. A lot of the softwares that you'll have to download just will not work on ARM64 um, compatibility. So don't get a super new Microsoft touchscreen computer and don't get a super new MacBook. But if you do have a MacBook, you will be in better shape because I have a computer <laughs> that is ARM64, meaning that I have a touchscreen Windows computer. It broke before, and I also have a MacBook. So the computers that I have, I'm telling you not to get because <laughs> you will have troubles. But luckily, I still made it through engineering with these computers. So it's not the end of the world if you have it. You're still going to be fine. You're still going to be able to accomplish most of your work because there's always alternatives for every type of problem you can have in engineering. Just telling you right now, MacBooks though, they are very hard to break. These softwares do not break MacBooks. Windows computers, however, have way more issues on their softwares, much easier to break. If you're only gonna do this on remote servers, you can skip this requirement. For those doing back-end development, Intel, AMD, or Apple laptops all work well. But Intel and AMD laptops have an advantage. You can run Linux on these laptops without the need of a virtual machine. If you're unaware, a lot of back-end code powering things like the internet runs on Linux servers. If you run a development environment that matches your production one, you can avoid a lot of nasty surprises during a code deployment. On Qualcomm laptops specifically, we caution you on buying one for software development right now. Many specialist applications don't run well. Since you don't know what you'll be coding in the future or what your needs will be, it's safer to just avoid one. Moving along. 
When it comes to memory, you're going to hate me for saying this. It depends on what you are coding. No YouTuber can give you a precise answer unless they know exactly what you are doing on your laptop. For example, if you're testing a very memory intensive application and you need to run multiple instances to ensure concurrency controls work, you'll need a hell of a lot of memory. Same goes if you need to run virtual machines on your laptop to test an application. As a developer, you should err on the side of caution and buy a laptop that will last you for many years to come. The more memory, the better. The absolute minimum for a new programming laptop should be 16 gig, but a general safe amount is 32, so try to get that if you can. When it comes to storage, again, highly dependent. If you plan to download a large production database for debugging purposes, you'll want a large amount of storage. 512 gig of storage will probably work for students. One terabyte though should really be the minimum for professionals, but again, more is better. Now, if you are deciding between upgrading the memory or storage on your new laptop, get more memory. Storage is often upgradable after you buy, and even if it isn't, you can buy an external drive. With memory, if you don't have enough, there is rarely anything you can do about it. Alright, stating the obvious, as a coder, you'll be typing on the keyboard a lot. You want one that is a joy to use, very comfortable. Plus, you'll want a standard layout. There is nothing more distracting than reaching for a key and pressing the wrong one. When it comes to the trackpad, you want a good one here too. Accurate enough for placing the cursor in specific locations within the code. You really don't want to have to rely on carrying an external mouse with you. Other than this, coding is a brain power intensive task. When you're in the zone, you want to minimize distractions. That means you want a laptop that doesn't feel overly warm to the touch. And if you are coding in a quiet environment or one without headphones on, you won't want to hear fan noise. That being said, on this last point, many coders that I know do code in a louder environment, so this may be a nice to have. Lastly, battery life. Most modern laptops do not have good battery life if you use them for high performing tasks like coding. If battery life is important to you, you should buy a MacBook. They are still by far the best in this department. Yeah, but I'm going to speak on this. Get a MacBook Air. Do not get a MacBook Pro. The reason I say this is because I have a MacBook Pro and I have every single add on, every single attachment you can get. It will overheat and it's extremely heavy to carry and the battery life is not good if you have the maximum amount of storage and the maximum amount of memory and the maximum amount of all the add-ons you can get. So if you're going to max out your computer, I have a maxed out computer. If you're going to max out your computer and you still want good battery, it's a delusional thing to want. It's not going to come from a MacBook Pro. It could come from a MacBook Air if you just have good memory, if you just have, you know, a good amount of storage. You really don't need too much storage. The MacBooks do have good um, good battery life. Also, though, I will say a lot of new Microsoft computers have good battery life. As long as your computer is more modern, uh, the battery shouldn't be um, disrupted too much. The next best would be to get a laptop with a large battery that is powered by AMD's latest Zen 5 chips or one from Qualcomm. Lunar Lake, Intel's newest processor, which is also called Core Ultra Series 2, is also meant to be pretty good. But here's the thing, I would not rely on your laptop to last a full day of coding when on battery. Plus, using the laptop consistently when on battery will degrade the battery. So I recommend buying a small, lightweight USB-C charger to carry with you regardless of which laptop you buy. And on that note, check out those Ugreen Nexo Pro chargers that I mentioned earlier in this video, link below. All in all, don't try to overcomplicate it when it comes to an engineer um, computer. If you guys want some suggestions, I could put some suggestions in the comments below on good computers I think you should use in engineering. It's not too complicated. Just make sure you have good memory. Just make sure if you can help it, try to avoid a MacBook. I know what he's saying. Oh, get the MacBook, get the MacBook. Just try to avoid it. At least a MacBook Pro. Try to avoid it. MacBook Air, yeah, you can you can get a MacBook Air. MacBooks will stand the test of time. They are they they will not break. MacBooks, one thing they will not break. But when you're trying to download other softwares, like if you're electronics engineering, um, even if you're a mechanical engineering and you do like any CAD software or civil engineering, don't really understand how if MacBooks could use that. But Nonetheless, I'm going to end the video here. Let me know what you all think. It's Jovan E.E.N. and I'll see you on the next one.